Hello and welcome to this video on what I see as the top three problems in many applications of latent profile analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesday on Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the m software and on Thursdays I present more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, latent class modeling and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to talk about what I see as the top three problems with many applications of latent profile analysis. This does not mean that I am against latent profile analysis, not at all, but I want to highlight some of the issues that I find suboptimal in many applications and then hopefully this will help you if you think about applying latent profile analysis yourself to avoid some of these problematic issues. Now, maybe number one uh, of what I find problematic is that individuals tend to extract too many classes or that they tend to be unsure about how many classes they should extract because it is often difficult to determine the number of profiles or the number of latent classes in latent profile analysis. Latent profile analysis extracts classes or clusters from continuous variables, continuous observed variables and therefore oftentimes there is sort of like a continuum as well with regard to the classes meaning you often have many ordered classes and there's often not a clear minimum of for example the BIC value for a certain number of classes or there's not a clear solution according to a bootstrap likelihood ratio test for comparing the number of classes so that uh, people are unsure about how many classes they should extract and that then ca that can lead to the extraction of too many classes, many of which are maybe not really distinct or maybe some of which capitalize on chance, uh, meaning they don't correspond to actual groups in the population. So that's one problem and that's particularly relevant for latent profile analysis because of the continuous nature of the observed variables. With a classical latent class analysis where you have binary or ordinal indicators, it tends to be less of an issue. It can also be a problem there, but with latent profile analysis, it's especially difficult, especially also when you have a large sample, then you have a lot of power, so say to de detect even small classes, and it can be problematic to have too many classes. And so a problem so say, related to that is that uh, many people go into a latent profile analysis without a clear theory about what they are expecting to find or clear hypotheses about what typological structure they um, aim to uncover and instead they throw in a bunch of variables in their latent profile analysis so to say without clear theory, without clear expectations or hypotheses and then as a result they are lost a little bit when they extract three, four, five, six, seven, eight classes and um, it keeps going so to say the BIC tends to decrease further and new classes look interesting, additional classes might be interesting and then they tend to extract more classes. So it's a really good idea to first of all develop a theory and develop some hypotheses about what groups you are expecting to find so that you're not completely lost and so that the whole analysis is not purely data driven. Another issue that um, I frequently see and that's related to my first point is that oftentimes I see presentations of latent profile analyses with clients or in the published literature where you have many ordered classes. So, uh, or where even maybe all of the classes are ordered. Now what does this mean? Ordered classes means for example you have a group of low functioning individuals 
medium functioning individuals and high functioning individuals. For example, if you um, have competence scales or competence related scales as indicators of latent profiles. Or for example, when individuals assess risk classes, then um, you have low, medium, high risk. And that's really not so interesting oftentimes because if the classes are purely ordered and there is no, um, the, the profiles do not cut or intersect with one another at any point, then the solution could be better represented oftentimes with a dimensional model, like for example, a factor analysis where um, maybe all the indicators are more or less indicators of a general factor of incompetence or competence, for example, or of risk versus non-risk or problematic behavior versus non-problematic behavior. And then really a latent profile analysis makes things unnecessarily complicated relative to a more straightforward analysis that works with dimensions. And that has to do with the fact that the indicators in latent profile analysis are continuous variables. So they are measured on a continuum and now we're extracting something categorical from continuous indicators and that may or may not be useful. And oftentimes actually it's not that useful in my opinion because oftentimes you would be better off looking at dimensions, meaning underlying factors, continuous latent variables that would tell you more about how individuals differ rather than throwing individuals into profiles where the assumption is that the individuals in that profile, in a given profile, so say are all the same except for some variability and that may not be the most useful thing. So when you see ordered classes in your application and you extract more classes and they're all ordered and it just becomes so say a continuum where the profiles don't intersect at one point, then you should really reconsider whether latent profile analysis is the best type of analysis. Latent profile analysis and latent class analysis are most interesting when you have non-ordered profiles where really a class is qualitatively different or some classes are qualitatively different from other classes, then you can uncover something that you would not easily uncover with a dimensional type of statistical analysis. And then lastly, one problem that I often see is in, or in presentations of latent profile analysis is that it's unclear what constraints, if any, were imposed on the analysis. Some programs for latent profile analysis impose certain constraints on the solutions by default and then people may not even be aware of that and they report a solution and they don't make it clear that those restrictions were or were not in the model. For example, the MPLUS software by default when you run a latent profile analysis imposes equality of the variances within class or across classes for the same indicators. So then the assumption would be that the mean profiles can differ for the indicator variables across classes, but not the variances. And that may or may not be a realistic and meaningful assumption. And so you should talk about that. You should also assess models where the variability can differ between classes, because why should all classes have the exact same variability that's not always a realistic or meaningful assumption. At least you should discuss this, you should look into this, you should let readers know what constraints were imposed on the profile solution in the program that you used. So transparency with regard to what parameters were estimated versus what parameters were set equal across time is something that you should report. You should also report the complete set of parameter values, meaning not just the mean profiles, but also report the variances, report any within class covariances if they were admitted, report the class sizes and so on. So be clear in your presentation. Also be clear about how you arrived at a given number of classes, what indices or what considerations did you use for selecting the number of classes? Why did you not extract more or fewer classes in your latent profile analysis? 
I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Check out the description for additional resources, including other videos and workshops on latent class and latent profile analysis. And I'll see you next time.